larger experiment. This experiment is broken into two broad parts. The first part involves calibration of this tr pressure transducer that we have down here, which is a strain gauge transducer. The second part involves the use of an actual cuff on the arm. So I've already got my cuff on to save some time. Um, in the first part, we need to switch the cuff off. So we've got this three-way um, valve, so I'll switch this to off so the cuff is no longer in the system and I just got straight from this sphygmometer into the pressure transducer. The sphygmometer is just pumped up using air and it's a mercury pillar so we'll pump it up to some value whatever it might be. Let's stop there, we'll set 250. Make sure that the valve on the, um, the bulb is closed so it won't release. If you want to let the pressure down you just open the valve a little bit and the pressure will drop. Alright, let's stop it. Pump it back up. 240, let's say. Alright. So, what we do is we try several different pressures with the sphygmometer. Those pressures are measured using the pressure transducer here, uh, which is a variable resistor. It's a strain gauge. That goes across here to this amplification unit through the grey wire. Uh, it gets amplified and converted to a voltage. The output voltage comes across here on this uh, coaxial cable, BNC and goes into the first channel of the oscilloscope. So what I can actually see on that is I've got um, where it says channel 1 mean 820 whatever it is that millivolts that corresponds to a pressure of just around 215 millimeters of mercury. So if I let that pressure down a little bit by opening the valve let's try and do this, get tangled up here so let the pressure down just a bit. So the pressure has now dropped. Um, and over here, what we'll see is that the voltage has gone down now to 607 millivolts. So um, we're converting this pressure into a voltage with the strain gauge uh, pressure sensor, and we need to calibrate it. So what you'll do is you'll try several different pressures and several get seven different voltages, and you'll have a calibration, uh, some calibration coefficients from that. OK, so that's the first part. The second part, what we'll do is we'll switch, um, and this is a bit tricky, but we'll switch off, well this part's not hard, so we'll switch the sphygmometer to off and bring the, the arm cuff into, into the uh, experiment. So the arm cuff pressure goes straight into the strain gauge now. Um, we're going to use the cuff and it's connected, it's pumped up through this grey tube which is connected to this uh, Criticur systems uh, device and all you have to do is make sure it's switched on and just press start and hopefully this will go okay sometimes my blood pressure comes out a bit high and it complains so we'll click start before we do that um, we're actually going to acquire that voltage from the strain gauge remember it went all the way to the oscilloscope and then I brought it even further across to the National Instruments Data Acquisition card in the corner and then on and then to MATLAB so in MATLAB I have a a function called uh, Biome 9650 Acquire Pressure and I'm going to sample 45 seconds worth of data at 10 kilohertz. So we want to go to quite a high frequency, sampling frequency. Uh, I'll just kick this off before I press start. So I'm going to do this quickly. So I'll press start on that and then I'll rush over here. I'll press start on the blood pressure device and it's going to start inflating the cuff. And this estimates the pressure on the way up, so when it's inflating, it estimates the pressure, uh, and then it just releases the pressure at the top. The signal that we get back will be very, very noisy, and we'll have to do some filtering on it. So you want to do low-pass filtering to get the gross uh, cuff pressure, and some high-pass filtering to get out that oscillometric signal, which is buried very in a very small voltage in the middle of all the noise. So the system seems to think my systolic pressure is 172 on 90. Could be true. Um, the high pressure life of an academic. Over here we have um, the trace and what we see is the it's a voltage against time you'll be able to convert this voltage into a pressure because you have the calibration constants from earlier on. Somewhere in this part of the trace buried is the oscillometric signal and you need to high pass filter um, a bandpass filter in fact to get rid of the high frequency noise and the low frequency trend on that and you'll see the oscillometric signal come out at the start around the systolic, sorry diastolic pressure on the way up and around the systolic pressure on the top.